Welcome to The Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. You're watching The Scott Townsend Show, watching and listening to The Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me a guest who's back, uh, Keith Clark. Actually, this is your third time on the show. Is that right? Yes, it is. First time. You're going to make me famous. <laughs> well, we had Keith back because we had uh, a lot of questions regarding the e-bike episode where you ran, ran across, drove, rode across Iowa on your e-bike. And so we just I wanted to revisit some of the questions. And uh, one of the questions was, oh, first of all, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. What would you have for breakfast? Oatmeal. That's it? That's it. No fruit or honey or... How do you mix your oatmeal up? Just water, brown <laughs> sugar, and cinnamon oatmeal. And it's kind of like a paste almost. I don't like yeah. it soup. You don't like milk. <laughs> but this is about bicycle, guys. Let's get back to the e-bike. Come on. All right. Number uh, first question, uh, Keith, and that is, why did you decide to buy an e-bike? I had some health issues years ago, actually almost six years ago, I had a heart attack and I, I was an avid bicycle rider. And I didn't want to give up my bicycle riding. You know, my doctor said I could ride 10, 15 miles. And I was like, no, I like to ride across states. And I'd done Oklahoma, Kansas, Iowa. And actually I've ridden in about 40 different states across America. I actually had a bike that I traveled with. Hmm. So an e-bike made sense that I could uh, still go out and enjoy the uh, bicycle adventure. So this e-bike, is it pure, I mean, you just flip a switch and ride it, or do you have to pedal still? No, it's pedal assist. It's a Trek cross whip. So the, uh, you have to uh, pedal to make it go. It just, it just helps you on the hills in the wind. And as my heart doctor says, I can always get back home without killing myself. Cool. Well, that's a good thing. Your, the second question is your biggest adventure so far on your e-bike. It had to do with that trip across Iowa that we talked about. And uh, it was eight days. I'd done a lot of one day trips, you know, 50, 60 miles on my e-bike, but I'd never done one self-contained. I used to do that all the time on my old bike. So, you know, going out riding across Iowa for eight days with no support, that was a challenge. So when you're on a regular bike, you just, you just go. But when you have an e-bike, there's things you got to think about. Yeah, the main thing is, is how do I keep my battery charged? And that was the third question. Uh, how did you manage to keep your battery charged going across the entire state of Iowa for eight days? Which I hadn't thought yeah. about that, but so how did you do that? Yeah, so my battery is good for about 60 plus miles on the low settings. I was self-contained, so I had bags, so my bike probably weighed an extra 40 pounds. But uh, one of the things I did, first of all, was buy a second battery. I think it's key to have two batteries. So you yeah. always have a backup, but That's smart. the way I did it, when I ride across prices, it's not about the bicycle ride. It's about seeing small town America, seeing museums and all. So I took off early in the morning and, uh, you know, usually I stop somewhere at a museum for a couple of hours to go visit and I used their electricity. I plugged in and charged up my battery and I always had a spare battery. And then in the afternoon, when it got hot, I don't like to ride in this heat of the day. My heart doctor doesn't like it either. So I went swimming. So I hung out at swimming pools from one o'clock to about three 30. And that gave me enough time to keep my battery charged throughout the day. So on your battery, how, how far can you go on an e-bike with on one battery? So if you start off at eight o'clock, how far can you get before you've got to switch batteries? I can get, I averaged about 55 miles and that was self-contained with bags and everything. So I could get right about 55 miles per battery on my uh, e-bike. And my goal was to do about 65 to 70 a day. So I knew even if I couldn't find charging during the day, I could always recharge at night when I camped out or, you know, hung out somewhere. Like a hotel room or somebody or something like that. Yeah. And usually I camp out, you know, but uh, this year with the COVID and everything else, I stayed in some hotels and needed some business. But, you know, so I charged up at night, but, you know, I did camp out one night and uh, 
got a vector. You know, you have to think about how you're going to charge your battery throughout the night to make sure in case it storms or whatever. So I had a system that I could keep my battery covered and uh, plug it into the electricity and just charge it up. And there was a, one night that I had to charge both batteries. So, you know, it takes about five hours to charge the battery up fully if it's completely dead. Each so battery is five my, hours? Yeah, to recharge it. I can get about a half a charge in about two hours. But what I did on that night was I set my alarm to go off at about 2.30 in the morning, got up, switched the two batteries. And by the time I got up at 6.37, my second battery was completely charged also. So if you're, if you're going till noon or one o'clock in the afternoon uh, and then you park it, why don't you tr start charging your batteries then and charge both of them up fully? Well, that's five well, I, hours. <clears throat> yeah, I've only, got, I've only got one charger that I carry with me. And uh, I never got to the point of having two batteries completely dead. There was a couple days that I pushed it and went about 110, 115 miles. And uh, on those days, I did do that. I, I stopped, you know, at the swimming pool to charge it. Or I, you know, I, one night I stopped at the park. They were having a uh, little evening uh, fair, I guess you'd call it. And uh, I walked around the park and I found me an electrical outlet, plugged in my battery on the electrical outlet. And then I hung out with uh, people in this little small town for the next two hours. Hmm. So, so I would it can think, be done. Yeah. I would think that I would want to go to a hotel room and just plug in and go to sleep. Well, that's the easy way to do it. But in a true <laughs> adventure, you know, camping out in crazy places, it's fun. And that's what we used to do. When I didn't have an e-bike, I could camp anywhere because I didn't have to worry about charging up my battery. Right. I just had to charge myself back up. Mm -hmm. So, but e-bikes can be done. And uh, I did 600 and I think 18 miles in eight days. And uh, never did run out of battery power. And keep in mind, if you do run out of battery power, you can still pedal an e-bike. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's <laughs> no assist and a very heavy bike and some drag on there. So. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if the battery goes out, you still, worst case scenario is it's all you. It's all me. All you plus some. If you had one piece of advice, here's another one, the last one. If you had one piece of advice to give someone about taking off on an adventure like this, what would it be? You can do it. You know, people, you know, think, oh, what am I going to do? But that's part of the adventure. Just take off and go ride. You know, start out doing an overnight trip, you know, two-day trip. Ride out somewhere, get the battery, make it back. And then stretch it to three days, four days. You know, I didn't plan on having a heart attack six years ago, and it kind of really put a little kinks because I had a big dream of riding across America on my bicycle, you know. And at first I thought it was over, but, you know, one thing I did was I bought a motorcycle, and, but that's not the same. You know, a bicycle, riding yeah, I know, that'd small be town kind of America, fun to go across on a motorcycle. Yeah, that's a whole other story. I got a motorcycle still. I'm going to do that. Yeah. But going across on an e-bike, or any bicycle is fun. And as I get older, you know, I started riding almost 17 years ago and uh, for, to prevent from having a heart attack, and I ended up having a heart attack. But I rode all over the United States. As I said earlier, I've ridden in 40 different states. I've got a bicycle with s and Cup Horse that when I did business trips, I took that bike with me and I put it together. And I rode all over the United States. And uh, the e-bike does have some challenges. It's heavier, and you have to keep the batteries charged. But it's a blast. You know, it takes out the hills. It takes out the wind. And when you have 40 pounds of gear on your bike, yeah. bags and panniers, it, it kind of makes it fun again. You're not dying going up those hills. <laughs> and when you get to our age, that's a, that's a big consideration. Yeah. I don't want to die on the, you know. But if I did die when I was riding my bicycle, what better way to go? You know? <laughs> Well, there you, yeah, yeah, well, to each his own. Hey, I, I think it'd be cool to, to run a ride across America on an e-bike. That, that would be cool. That'd be a cool challenge. I wonder if anybody's done that yet. I'm sure they I'm have. I'm sure that, I'm sure they have. The, uh, you know, one of the things I'm going to do is do it across in stages. I can't really take off for three months because I like to see small stuff. So I don't want to just go out and hammer across America. I want to stop in every small town and go visit people museums, 
interesting stuff. And that's the thing I challenge people to do. Go out and see small town America. Get out of the big city. Go out and ride the back roads. You know, even if you uh, live in a big city, take your bike and go park 50 miles away and go ride somewhere different. Go see that small town. Get away from the big city. That's the adventure. Meet new people. Well, there you go. So thanks for answering those questions, Keith. Uh, that was, uh, those were good questions. And that video and your other video um, about the motorcycle uh, incident has huge traction. Can't, can't believe it. So appreciate that. Thanks for answering the questions. And if you, you know, if you like these videos, you like listening to it while you're driving, jogging, riding an e-bike, motorcycle, bicycle, whatever, Hit, you, hit the, on iTunes, hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a review if you like. And if you're on YouTube, uh, subscribe. We invite you to subscribe, leave a comment, like it, share it, <clears throat> let other, other people know about it. So that's my little plug for the, yeah. for the... One more thing. What's that? You know, we had eight days. Maybe we ought to think about showing some pictures of what we saw over those eight days. So maybe we'll do another video. And, you know, day one, day two, day three, because... It's amazing what you see out there when you uh, actually are going 12 to 15 miles an hour, you know, and uh, the people you meet. So it's a fun adventure. Get out of the house and take off across America. So there was one picture that you had where you were uh, standing in front of a statue. It was a big metal bicycle giant or something. What was that? That was actually a, uh, I was riding into a small town and I saw it was a guy that does welding and he had all these creatures made from different welding things, just pieces of junk iron. And I saw that bicycle and I thought, I got to take a picture with that. But I've got a lot of other pictures, you know, on that trip one where you're in front of the, uh, in front of the ice cream cone. Yeah, that was the uh, first town. And the reason I picked Iowa this year was because I've done ride bry many a time and they were going to have the Iowa ride also. So I wanted to go do it. And, I, and then they canceled it because of COVID. And I really thought people would still go. And they did. I saw some people, I met people when I was out riding and uh, met new friends, but uh, it was kind of an interesting thing because I, I rode across Iowa, you know, and not straight across. I went North and South and, that's how I ended up with 16, 618 miles. But I actually met the lady that did uh, the ice cream, Beekman's ice cream. And uh, I ended up going through the town she lives in. And she saw me riding and she saw me and she recognized me from my previous ride rides. And she pulled over and waved me down and I couldn't believe it. So I got a picture with her. So that'd be a whole nother good story about the people you meet and the stories you see when you go to visit these small towns. Mm-hmm. Yep, let's do it. Well, for Keith Park, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for watching and listening to the Scott Townsend Show. Everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Townsend Show is a Dietzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.